Hello and welcome to everyone who's joining us for the web version of our workshop. We host monthly educational workshops at various branches and locations in the community, but we understand not everyone can get to us in person, so we'll occasionally offer versions that can be viewed right here on our website. Today we're talking about preserving your personal information. We will be going over what identity theft and financial scams are, how to avoid them, and what to do if you're a victim. I'm Frank Pomerico, the manager of our Wallingford branch, and I'll be your host today. We thank all of our members who are watching this WebEx and also want to offer some introduction to Connects for those who may not already be with us. We are a full-service financial institution serving anyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in New Haven, Hartford, and Middlesex counties. With the mission to improve the lives of our members, one member at a time, we offer a full range of financial products and services. As a credit union and the UnBank, we return our profits to our members in the form of better rates and lower fees. We're also a safe place to keep your hard-earned money. As the fifth largest credit union in Connecticut, we have 366 million in assets and more than 40,000 members. We're also insured by the National Credit Union Administration, a federal government agency that insures your deposits and gives you peace of mind. Moving on to the topic of identity theft, here are some statistics that might be shocking. Identity theft is on the rise. In 2010, 7% of the U.S. households had at least one incident of identity fraud, which is an increase from 5.5% in 2005. Of the estimated 8.6 million households that were victims in 2010, 64% experienced the misuse of an existing credit card account and spent 21 hours and $373 out of pocket to resolve the crime. So what is identity theft? Identity theft occurs when someone else gathers enough personal and financial information about you to successfully impersonate you online by mail, over the phone, or in person in order to commit theft. We will be covering what is considered personal and financial information shortly. Many times a thief gets a hold of your personal and financial information using financial scams. Common financial scams include elements of identity theft where the scammer obtains enough information about you to access your funds fraudulently. We will be covering different scams and how to protect yourself later in the presentation. Your personal information can include your name, address, social security number, date of birth, and mother's maiden name. Your social security number is something you should only give out when you have to, and only to trusted companies or government offices. No one should proactively contact you asking for your whole social security number. If they do, it is a scam. Many times on loan and credit applications, your mother's maiden name can be used as a password or identifier. Your financial information can include your credit union or bank account number, debit or credit card number, debit or ATM pin number, CVV code, and account password. Under no circumstances should you share your pin number or account password with anyone. Even if you're diligent in not giving out your information, thieves and scammers will still try to get a hold of your information. They can steal information from your home, go through your trash, steal your wallets and purses, or get your information online through unsecured websites. One way thieves can get information from your home is by stealing your mail. Documents like bank and credit card statements, credit offers, new checks, and tax information often contain enough information about you to access your accounts or pose as you. Signing up for e-statements is one way you can reduce some of this risk. It's a common misconception that e-statements also aren't safe, but that's not true. Protecting your statements behind the username and password log in information needed to log into home banking ensures you're the only one who has access. Sometimes thieves will change your address using a change of address postal form at the post office and forward your mail to another location. Thieves can also pretend to be a legitimate business person or government official over the phone or via email and try to swindle information out of you. 
Phishing scams are ways thieves can get your information through forms of electronic communication, such as texts and emails. These communications may pose as a legitimate company you do business with that prompt you to respond to an attempt to acquire your information. Oftentimes, phishing includes randomly contacting people based on their geographic location where they may not actually have any of your personal or contact information. Always make sure you're the one contacting companies with their known and trusted phone numbers, emails, and websites. If you receive communication that seems like it could be phishing, always reach out to the company at their published contact information to confirm the legitimacy of any communication. Another easy way to spot a phishing scam that also helps prove in most of these situations they don't actually have your information is if you receive communication from companies or businesses you don't actually even do business with. With electronic communications, you may get directed to a website or phone number asking you to enter information. Again, always make sure you're using a known and trusted website or phone number. Another form of phishing is called skimming. This is when thieves place an electronic device on ATMs or at gas station card readers that steal your card information. If something doesn't look right, don't use your card and alert the store or financial institution. Connects checks their ATMs regularly for skimming devices. To avoid phishing scams, the single biggest point to remember is that legitimate companies will not proactively reach out to you to simply request your information. This is especially true via email, text, or other forms of electronic communication. There should never be a situation where a company has to contact you to verify your personal or account information. When in doubt, always check with the company before ever providing any information. As your financial institution, here is what Connects will do when contacting you. We will send periodic updates or marketing emails. We will communicate online banking login information via text message. This is a text that you have initiated yourself. In the future, we will deliver mobile banking information via text message. These mobile banking notifications are something you will have initiated by signing up for them. Connects may ask you for your account passwords when you initiate a call with our call center. Connects will also prompt you to enter a password when logging into online banking. These are either simply informational electronic communications or transactions that you have initiated via trusted sites and forms of communication established between you and Connects. Any personal information that Connects asks from you will be from communications that you have initiated. Connects will never proactively contact you just to verify or update your account information via electronic channels in unsolicited communication. When you call us or stop in a branch, you know that you're communicating legitimately. If you get an unsolicited text message or email posing as connects, do not respond. Always pay attention to the phone numbers and emails, making sure they are from known sources. If you're ever in doubt about a communication, please contact connects at our trusted numbers or stop by a branch. If these do get a hold of your information, here is how they can use it. They can change the mailing address on your accounts, open new credit card accounts in your name using your social. They can even establish phone or wireless services in your name. With your information, thieves can also open checking accounts to write bad checks, buy cars with auto loans in your name, and give out your name to police during an arrest. By getting a hold of your credit or debit account numbers, thieves can purchase online and make fake cards to use at ATMs or make purchases in store. There are some ways to tell if you're a victim of identity theft. If you notice you're not receiving bills or other mail, this may be a sign that a thief changed your address. If you start receiving credit cards or billing statements for accounts you didn't open, or if you receive calls from debt collectors of companies about merchandise or services you didn't buy, is a sign your information was stolen. Also make sure you're keeping an eye on your accounts frequently. 
Using a service like online banking will allow you to easily check your account balances as many times as you want. Despite best efforts, thieves may still get their hands on your information. If you are a victim of identity theft, there are a series of steps to reclaim your identity. Step 1. Call the fraud department of the three major credit bureaus to obtain copies of your credit report and tell them your identity has been taken. Have fraud flags and victim statements added to your credit report saying all potential creditors should contact you to verify credit applications. Get credit reports from all three credit bureaus and verify that all personal information is correct and make sure that no additional fraudulent accounts have been opened in your name or that unauthorized charges have been made to existing accounts. Also check the credit inquiry section of your reports and get any fraudulent inquiries removed. Step 2. Close any accounts that have been tampered with or opened fraudulently. Have new account numbers and passwords placed on any tampered accounts. If your credit union or bank account has been affected, work with the institution to get a new account new debit or ATM card, and new checks. Step 3. File a police report with either your local police or the police in the community where the identity theft took place. Be sure to get a copy of the police report in case your financial institution, credit card company, or others need proof of the crime. A police report may be required to get any money back that was taken from you. Step 4. File a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC enters these complaints into a secure consumer fraud database that law enforcement agencies use in pursuing criminal investigations. So what should you do to regain your identity after an identity theft incident? When you open your new account, insist on password-only access to minimize the chance that an identity thief can violate the account. Cancel your ATM and debit cards as soon as you can and get another one with a new PIN. For stolen mail, report it to your local postal inspector. If you have investment accounts that have been tampered with, you should immediately report it to your broker or account manager as well as to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Contact your phone or wireless service providers immediately to cancel the account and or calling card open new accounts and choose new PIN numbers. If your driver's license has been taken, report it to the Department of Motor Vehicles. We've already covered a few ways to prevent your information from being stolen. These are some reminders and tips we haven't discussed. Be sure to destroy any personal information securely by shredding it. If you don't have a shredder, keep an eye out for shredded events that are held by local communities or various businesses. Always put outgoing mail in secure and official Postal Service collection boxes. Be sure to store new and cancel checks in a safe place. Never give out your ATM or debit card PIN to anyone. Look at all your bills and statements carefully and question any suspicious or unrecognized charges immediately. To help avoid identity theft online, make sure your computer is protected. Installing antivirus and anti-spyware software can help unwanted programs from stealing information stored on your computer. Using surge protectors can help protect your computer from a power surge that can cause your computer to malfunction and lose personal information. Installing firewalls and spam blockers can help protect against any unwanted items or programs from getting on your computer. When you're entering sensitive information online for things like shopping or online banking, make sure you're using a secure website. You can tell a website is secure by seeing either SHTTP or HTTPS in the address line of your browser. This will tell you that all information traveling between you and the website is encrypted and being sent securely. When reading emails, make sure they are coming from a trusted source. Links in fraudulent emails can forward you to malicious or fake websites that try to steal your information. To avoid this, manually type or cut and paste the website address into your browser so you're not misdirected. 
any legitimate website that you're doing business with or that you're giving your information will have a privacy policy. If they don't have a privacy policy, question their intentions. If they do have a privacy policy, it will address any questions you might have about accuracy, access, security and control of personal information collected, how the information will be used, and whether it will be provided to third parties. Connects does in fact have a privacy policy which can be found on our homepage, www.connectcu.org. Our privacy policy is up to both industry and government standards. Also on our website you will find an online security center. This section of our site will help provide information on website protection, online safety terms, and definitions, helpful safety articles and tips, and credit protection and monitoring information. Connects has two services that can help you protect your identity. Every quarter we give members with a qualified checking account their smart score credit score range for free. This can help warn you about possible identity theft if you notice a sudden drop in your credit score range. Connex also offers an identity theft resolution and credit monitoring service for a below market cost. This service will monitor your credit to prevent and detect any identity theft. If there are any identity theft issues, resolution experts will work with you and do the heavy lifting to ensure that your identity is reclaimed. To find out more about our identity theft resolution and credit monitoring service, click the link in the video description, visit our website, give us a call, or stop by any of our branches. Thank you for taking the time to view our workshop on preserving your personal information. If you have any questions, please visit one of our branches or give us a call at 1-800-CR-UNION. You can find a branch near you by going to our website and choosing locations in the About Connects menu. Please look for future workshop topics available coming soon.